Hello, hello. My name is Steve Jaguar. And I'm his co-host, Michael Foster. Welcome to your cloud native video newsletter for your impatient world, where we distill the best cloud native Kubernetes news of all about the Kubernetes, but big acquisitions think make you go, what? And sometimes maybe, maybe when it works, a deep technical dive in something. <laughs> yes, in, into something. Uh, we have actually a bunch of things that broke this week. There's a couple yeah. CVEs. I have some breaking news, which we won't talk about. And actually, I, I just found out about some other breaking news, Steve. So super excited to dive into oh, it. Cool. Uh, we have some Docker founder making some splash, ex Docker founder mm -hmm. making some splash. Uh, we have teenagers getting arrested from the Lapsus gang. And of course, some big Stack Rocks news. Thanks for joining the show. Hope you're having a good week. Everything is broken this week, uh, including our my, intro broke there for my a bit. ability to click links. So, uh, yeah, if you uh, like what you're seeing, especially the broken stuff, just hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, and you will f get notifications for when we, when we go live, which is typically Thursday, eleven. I guess you guys are done daylight savings time, so we're back to normal time. We're back, four p.m. Back. That's awesome. Uh, you can. Any uh, any important news in your world, Steve? That you want to talk about? I'll touch on it. Actually, I'm gonna. I might. I might do the little thing about the bridge crew release at the end, uh, depending on how tool time goes. That would be the interesting thing for me. Um, otherwise, otherwise, uh, no. Other than doing personal various forms of personal damage to my body that have made me a little bit offline this week, no, nothing technical. Oh, all the good stuff. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the big news, I guess we're going to get to the general news aspect of it is StackRox open sourcing, but let's just get into it and talk about it. Yes, yes, StackRox officially open sourced. So the blog's not up yet. Uh, it should be up in the next hour or two, but the code is available github stack rocks slash stack rocks oh. if we want to go there yeah we do um yeah of course github stack you probably yeah i was gonna say i figured you might have it bookmarked it somewhere but yes github stack rocks slash stack rocks and available on quay at stack rocks dash io all the container images are built stack rocks code is available and Woo. yes you can probably find the license file that got pushed as of 20 minutes ago so but the most is that the most recent uh push 36 minutes ago there's some changes so yeah cool super excited yeah so try it out let us know what broke what didn't we have a hashtag stack rocks channel on the cncf slack if you want to ping us there also community at stackrocks.com uh, and we have a couple people that will answer your emails 
and engineering meetings April 12th and office hours April 19th. So if things are breaking, things aren't working, come and yell at us there and we will do our best to fix it for you. But super excited, Steve. I think if we're going to do sort of a series finale next week, maybe you do a Stack Rocks breakdown. Tell us what you like, what you don't. I'll, well, if I, if I can't get it done by then, I'll certainly tell you that. Because, uh, <laughs> I mean, enough. there's issues with getting it working, Fair but I can enough. try it. Awesome. Yeah, nice. Perfect. That's really cool. Yeah, I still have my um, cluster from the CKS alive and kicking. So that I'll, I'll, nice. I'll slam it into some GCP and see what happens. Nice, nice. Uh, unless you're going to tell me now it doesn't work. But anyway, <laughs> GCP. <laughs> Okay, that that's awesome. That's really exciting. I mean, obviously, being uh, almost what I'm on my one year anniversary uh, out of Stack Rocks since the acquisition. So it's uh, it's super cool to see Red Hat keeping their word on on open source and all that. It's pretty pretty yeah, cool. It only took a year, but we did it. It's there's a lot yeah. of moving parts. It is incredible, and you start to see one last word before we jump into the next uh, section. You start to see all these companies start open source. And you realize why that's a huge advantage if you're starting it, because all your customers, all of the way that you structure your code, your repositories, the different projects, the dependencies that you take in, there's, let's say, a lot of engineering effort that goes into that. If you start closed source and then open source, you have to restructure a lot of that. So anyways, a lot of yeah. parts, happy that it is open source and looking forward to all your feedback. All righty. All right. Next, I was going to comment on, on the on now I'm a part of projects that are that started open source. They have their own idiosyncratic problems. Yeah. <laughs> Say that. Next up. Yeah. Next up, this article caught my attention. Did I put this in here? Did you? I feel you like did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was hilarious. The case against the best practices. And I like I, I thought, oh yeah, first line to the disgruntlement of some people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, well begun. Um, but it, what, did you check it out or shall I, it's plugging. I, I, I but, did and I actually yeah. completely agree. So yeah. coming from a, let's say a process engineer background in biopharma, the number one rule that we had was nothing can be assumed, right? You can't assume anything. There's mm -hmm. no tribal knowledge. If, if you have to ask the question and only one or two people know it, then you haven't documented it properly. Right. And if there's no documentation, yeah. then there's no responsibility. So hey, you know, you see some sort of tribal knowledge, something out there that's not documented, you're documenting it, you're signing your name next to it, and then, and then multiple people are going to come and verify that, yes, this is the way we're going to move forward, right? And yeah, I, I agree. I think it is. it's, it's a, it's a I, I, catchy headline, but I agree with the sentiment that they're trying to push. Yeah, I think same. Um, having worked, worked as a, uh, well, I don't know what to call it, pre-sales solution architect, I think your micro microphone's buzzing. I don't know if you can hear it too. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's we. I would walk into major enterprise customers, et cetera, and and we were there about doing security stuff in cloud native, and they would say, "Well, what are the what? What would you say are the best practices for uh, implementing or doing security in the CI/CD?" And it's like you're you're just I could. I could give you some okay practices, but we live in a we live in a pretty cutting edge domain. And if I put my neck on the line by saying, "Here's a best practice," it's like you're just trying to offload your own problem solving onto somebody else. And I'm like, I don't know that that's a good idea, independent yeah. of whether how, how long does a best practice the you know, the life cycle of, of any current best practice in this industry at the moment is like, ugh, nothing. I, I mean, I think compliance standards are a perfect example of what best mm. practices should be, right? It's like, hey, remove uh, the ability to access root from all your containers. Like, yeah, okay, that's a best practice. Yes, it's compliant. There are gonna be some situations where you're gonna need to do it. Does that mean you're not following best practices or are you just aware that it's the use case, it's the exception, right? That's the big aspect. Yeah, I think so. That actually, that's a good way of distinguishing. A best practice should be vague. Yeah, and no. you, it's up to Probably you our to next understand one. what's going on and how to apply it, right? And in fact, that leads nicely into our next article, which is why well, I, I entitled it, it's all about the base, which I think I may have stole from a newsletter. Zero security different camera or that saw is from possible. Megan Trainer. Oh yeah, it's that. That's probably where it's ripped from. That's why I've had the song. There, that's because it says right there. 
white papers entitled all about that base image. Uh, and it's chain guard, it's a white paper. You should just basically, yeah, we're not gonna tell you what's in it. Just go read through the uh, chain guard base image um, white paper, which I think you can download at the bottom of this. This link is of course is right below for watching this on YouTube. But it, it's, it, it's just generally, it's a best practice. Hey, how about that, uh, Mr. Foster? But it analyzes uh, popular base images billions of times, security debt, it's kind of going through the do's and don'ts of it. Um, what was the other part of this that I wanted to call out? Did you read that? Check this. No, this was this one's all you. Uh, quiet, quiet. That was the term quiet. I like that. Quiet base images. That was it. Minimal images with few reported vulnerabilities. Like your Alpine's current latest version almost always has zero. So if yeah, you can, and, and you, you can also build from scratch too, right? If you really want to get to that point, but. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, in general, I think we've we've demoed a couple tools, right, that have identified useless layers and tried to remove. Oh them, yeah, right? oh yeah, we did that recently. Yeah, and I, there there is a okay. There's there's two things. Is one, it's nice to use the lowest level base image, but as you build and you get all different applications and deployment strategies and things like that, it's tough to get that base image layer where it's consistent across all of them. Because like if every single organization or team or something like that is using their own base image, well then how do you, it's a lot harder to secure at scale, right? You got it. So there's that, it's, it's really tough reducing security debt. So it's like, you got to find that minimal use case and finding that base image is, is exhausting. I suppose, I don't know what they get, it, get, they get into it, but they're, they're, there's an aging process, right? Zero security yeah. debt and a, and a base image lasts about a day. <laughs> it's true. all right all right that that's a little bit of uh base best practice transition knowledge i think the next one this was a debatable whether we were going to have this in big spender whether we were just going to talk about it and we opted just to talk about it that is just because it's cool that it is this is dagger.io and um there's probably, I think there's a blog article in here talking about how they got 20 million in their series A or they're just past their seed recently, which I think was this month, but it just drew attention to the fact that this company Dagger.io, a portable dev kit for CICD pipelines. Uh, you had a comment on this when we first found it. Why don't I just let you do that? And... Uh, yeah, so if you think about GitHub Actions or GitLab Runners or something like that, really it's just a containerized cron job. You're saying, hey, go push, run all these checks. You know, you're providing a specific environment uh, I've heard, and really all this is trying to do is give you the tools for an opera, for an operations team to build that CI pipeline, CI CD pipeline, and then say, hey, here's the pipeline and you can run it locally as long as you have enough resources and blah, blah, blah. I think there's going to be some, some carve outs for that. But, mm -hmm. you know, now if I'm a developer, I don't need to constantly do like a git push, git push, git push to test. I could just run it in the background while I continue developing. Right. So, yeah. yeah. It, and, and from a notification standpoint, I just, I would love that. I hated when people just git push and then, oh, it, you broke. Like it broke. Yeah, it broke. It broke. I see people changing the code. <laughs> it's not passing the checks. Right. Like that's yeah. just a nice way. So you can, you can pass all the checks. You can do it locally. And partially this functionality is only available now that we have a lot better processors now that people have better computers, because mm -hmm. there's no way this type of application, the, the concept I'm sure was dreamt of eight years ago, but, uh, people didn't have the, the laptops for it. Right. That's for sure. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I, I it's funny you say that I, I, I pushed something today that broke, you know, I'm the bad guy. According to, according to you today. Um, and it was stupid. Uh, and so I had to fix it. And this would be really cool. This would be good for me. I don't know that YAML is hell. People like to say YAML is hell. It's not that bad. It's it's just a fad. So yeah. As soon as something gets popular and just... Well, yeah. There was a funny YouTube video talking about that. Oh, it's the jam stack. It's so-and-so stack. Oh, you know, just come up with some funny acronym. It'll be hot for a year and then people will get over it, right? Yeah. That's probably true. All right, what's our next thing? Are we still on general news? Kubernetes workloads. Oh, this is a U, yeah. Oh, but I like it, so let's do this. Mm -hmm. Zoom, zoom. Yeah, just a, 
a breakdown of what constitutes Kubernetes workloads, what uh, companies tend to be using, and I, I actually machine learning, anything that's stateless. I think you're starting to see mm -hmm. as Kubernetes matures, organizations are starting to figure out how to actually leverage containers properly. And it's your CI pipelines, it's your your machine learning, and your all your basically your stateless activities are going to be infinitely easier to run. And so as as let, let's say the platforms to help get better. Um, you start to see, you know, organizations use it properly. Something like Kubeflow, right? Which I remember following three years ago. It was very, it was in its infancy. And now it's actually something that's a, a very usable piece of software that I think has come a long way. So uh, Argo CD would be another one, right? Like you can add mm -hmm. all of your pipelines in your Kubernetes clusters uh, and, and run them from there and have some pretty impressive pipelines. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. It has a little bit of a shout out to, I think, some of the old Stack Rocks data, maybe. But, oh, yeah? Or no, I think it's just the CNCF data that, that typically they, they pull from. But yeah, yeah. the most common Seems use like cases, it. uh, it, it's pretty interesting. Check it out. It is pretty cool. There's a fog edge computing, quantum computing. It's funny having the conversation last week uh, from the data on Kubernetes. I'm essentially talking about stateful workloads, and the the problem we have with that. It's no surprise that uh, stateless or stateless, stateless, which was what Kubernetes was originally designed as, and, and containers is is still the shining star in terms of uh, most prevalent use. Cool. Yeah, and it, it really is the best use case for your hybrid. Yeah, your hybrid workloads. Like, oh, yeah. You know, most people are going to have some sort of requirements around data, but like like if if you're going hybrid, if you have on prem. Like that's that's going to be your bread and butter for stateless workloads. Definitely. All right. It's getting the crazy stuff. Let's go. Let's go nuts. <laughs> yes. This this first one came across uh, my lap the other day. Oxford lap. teen. Yeah. That seems crazy, right? Oxford teen accused of being multimillionaire cyber criminal. Jeez, dude. Start him young. <laughs> the leaders of the cyber gang. 14 million in hacking. Yeah, well, it's not what am I going to Anything now. Ah, uh, seven teenagers in relation to the gang. Uh, will not say if he is one. Wow. The boy's father told the BBC he was trying to keep him away from computers. <laughs> nice. That's just great. Do you think there's going to be a movie written about this? Because it, it says the teenager who has autism is is, is said to be behind the prolific lapses hacker crew. Like I feel like that's every Hollywood movie, right? You have somebody who's super smart. Yeah. They're always portrayed as having some sort of uh, like fixation. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's a it's movie. Crazy. Getting it, I know it's it's one of those. Uh, it's like a storyline that wrote itself. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like Rain Man meets Zero Cool from Hackers. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty insane. He's said to have asked 14 million USD as a teenager. I'm assuming most of it's got to be in crypto, right? If he's smart. Yeah, I would think it's probably untied. Well, if he, if he was smart enough to do what he did, I mean, he's doing some pretty smart stuff. That's, uh, that's yeah, very impressive. 300 BTC. I mean, there it is. Yeah, it's in Bitcoin. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Anyways, and for those who are wondering, yeah, Lapsus is. is the gang that uh, was behind the recent release of the Okta hack and breach. And there was another one too, right? Yeah. It was Lapsus. Microsoft. Microsoft. There's last a Microsoft week. one. Yeah. But they they've been hitting people up since January. So I say they. This <laughs> guy. I don't know his gang, whatever that is. That's <laughs> it's it's funny when everybody has this idea that it's it's some kind of right russian cyber super criminals living in a volcano somewhere and it's like no no it's it's this british kid in his basement when his parents think he's playing video games yeah those are always the, the craziest stories <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be hard to top that wtf but let's try this was i i the obvious thing i could see this you stuck this in there i can see why you this caught your caught your eye right Reasons not to donate. Yeah. An open source. Hey, Hands up. They, they wrote a good title. Not in capitals. It got my eye. 
Yeah, definitely. So uh, I read through all this. Um, actually, like you stuck it in here, but I thought this did, this person here, Yevian. Yeah. This is a really good answer. What do you think? Yeah, no, I I put that in there partially because I read their comment and I thought it was pretty succinct. It was. Mm. Uh, I didn't yeah, go ready for incubation, which is to say were. headed for graduation. There's a whole list of things and hurdles that somebody needs to pass through to get to become CNCF graduated project. And just dumping a project into the CNCF isn't really useful, right? It, it, you can run your own communities. It doesn't need to be a part of the CNCF. You can build all that without the CNCF logo. I mean, if you want to get your little logo on the puzzle box, that's 2000 pieces. Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do it. Uh, and then uh i'm blank got his name from aws cory quinn will yell Corey at quinn yeah <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's it's a lot of work and there is a, a huge amount of hurdles um that are that are associated with it so it's a good breakdown i don't want to read the whole what is it five, no. six paragraphs that they wrote yeah i'm just i'm highlighting certain bits that come highlight no one's going to come take over don't freak out yeah but also you, um, you found the WTF part was somebody just like looked at their Reddit account and realized what the project was that they were talking about. Oh, I did. Yeah. I just looked this, at this guy and went, I recognize that thing went right here. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> it's Kubius. We demoed Kubius a couple months ago. It's almost uh, like he made it, it obvious. Cubius, get it? He made it. Uh, <laughs> hey, yeah, this observation tool. It was good. Yeah, it was very solid. It was pretty solid. So he's obviously wondering there isn't, you know, how many obs observability tools like this oh. that are, are, are in are in CNCF already? Like, is there a maybe that's it? Maybe he's just wondering, should I? Should I? I don't know. I mean, the, there's one right at the very bottom. I think there's a response that's just like, you're going to lose your any legal copyright on your on it there it is losing copyright like which he probably means trademark actually just on kuvius becomes owned by cncf not yeah. you or your company or your SaaS solution or your business right that's that's your loss other than that though i would say tons of positives and uh hey uh ruben hack if you ever want to do a talk at kubecon it helps yeah, that's very true. It's funny, uh, uh, Philip commented, and I think you need to get a job uh, as entry level, you need 10 certs and five years experience. And this is also in reference to the hacker who got right. 14 okay. million, right? As a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It's uh, a very interesting world in tech, that's for sure. Yeah. 10 certs, yeah always more experience than the lifespan of the technology you're applying for a job to work with. Mm -hmm. That is a constant. All right. All right. That's the, that's the last one. The other one you add in here was the, uh, uh Octa gets weirder. Uh, yeah. Octa got a little weirder. Let me just clear all the faff off the top of the screen that was trying to pop up on me. Yeah. Did you take a look at this one? Uh, I did not. I, I got caught at the other one and then realized, forgot this one was here. So give me a rundown. Uh, basically there was a summary report from Satel that said they should have used, uh, went more swiftly. They wanted to learn how they could develop and improve based on the incident. Uh, but something to do with, I guess like the report and what was disclosed, even with the dates from Octo were slightly off. So yeah. the company originally said the service hadn't been breached and then there was an intrusion timeline. And the intrusion timeline looks pretty bad. You can see basically they got access and there was three days before the people who got access even realized they got access. Oh. Yeah, so they, yeah. they it was uh, through a Microsoft uh, virtual machine, I think, or a Active Directory or something like that sort of situation. Um, but yeah, it was really, it, it must have been, you know, somebody just runs a program, walks away for the weekend and then comes back and is like, oh, I, yeah, I'm in this machine. Then you can see them trying to figure out download packages. But the, the question is like, why didn't that trip a flag right away? Because the original, yeah. what they used to breach it should have set off something and it didn't. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, well, yes. It's... Yeah, but and the, but it's like we weren't compromised, and it was kind of like a well, by definition, you were compromised. Like as soon as that first day happens, and somebody gets access, yeah. like somebody has access to your your network, You're right? So it was You're just kind of like a the way they worded it, the way that they disclosed everything. It was just sketchy. Anyways, the intrusion timeline would be alone would be presumably deeply alarming. To a company like Okta. <laughs> well, it's funny, right? You know, I wonder. I, we had a, I had a, I had a conversation in a podcast I did this week with Aaron Reinhardt, who, who does, who pushes. He's like the big guy, along with Kelly Shoreridge, for security chaos engineering. And it's the, it's the notion of, you know, breach yourself and see if the other things actually trigger, like the stuff that tells you you're breached to the right degree of severity actually does the thing that you paid for and put in place rather than wait until this moment happens and you look like an idiot because you went off and said you were fine. Or maybe you know, let's give them the benefit of the doubt, assuming they're not lying and that maybe their own internal intrusion detection didn't give them the, the degree of reality that, that it was. Who knows, right? But it was, it was interesting. Yeah, they're definitely getting... Rip. They're not. They don't look good. They're getting dragged uh, <laughs> in a lot of articles this week. So, <laughs> hug ops to everybody. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, All right. Let's spend some. Money. Go. Yeah. And I, I unknowingly segued into this by mentioning security cast engineering. Yeah. Uh, and I hadn't, that was not my intent, but Harness, Harness acquires Chaos Native. Chaos Native are the authors of the Litmus Chaos, which is written in here somewhere. There it is. CNCF project. Hey, everything's coming together today. They're getting a, a which is one of the biggest yeah, certainly most utilized. Well, we had, was it when you and I did a, a meetup? Then we have Jessica Cherry. She came on into the talk with us and she mentioned Limitless Chaos yep. uh, as, a, as a very handy tool for chaos engineering. So that is now owned. And I don't even know how big uh, Chaos Native is. I thought it was like a guy or like not a big team. Yeah, it's like, catching on now. I just so had uh, an ex coworker. Well, now ex coworker that went to join the harness team. So, pretty interesting. Yeah, harness is getting more and more interesting. They're kind of expanding. They sat in my, they sat, kind of sat in my backlog of must learn more about harness because I never used harness. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, okay, I, they're getting interesting. So, it seems, it seems pretty cool. I think good, well done with Chaos Native. This ties back to, reasons not to donate to cncf well another positive everybody uses your tool then yep and you might get bought which yeah. if that's what you're after and you get a bunch <gasps> of uh developer feedback and there's a, a huge amount of pluses there yeah yeah tons of tons of pluses there good 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 community building opportunity out of the box that doesn't of course mean that you should uh rely on it for yeah, sure. very cool. All right, I'm, well, well done. I think Harness, is, everybody wins in that particular acquisition. No no money, obviously, changing hands, but maybe that will come out of the woodwork at some point. Definitely. All right, into the, uh, the vulnerabilities. Cookie time. Yeah. Cookie time. Now, what starts with the letter C? The word dun, dun, dun. critical. <laughs> yes. Sonic wall firewall appliances. I put this in here because it's like insecurity, but I've never used Sonic wall firewall. Have you? No. <laughs> this one's right over my head. Well, I mean, it's a firewall. I mean, I work for a company that makes firewalls, so they probably say it's an inferior firewall or to the firewall we have, but. It certainly is at the moment, given it's got a CVSS score of 9.4 .4? on the books. Ooh. Yeah. Hey. <coughs> Classic buffer overflow deal. 
uh, in the web management interface. So that sounds, yeah, especially crafted HTTP request leading to remote code execution or denial of service. Oh, okay. I had originally read, maybe it was a different article, but it was only a denial of service because it's so, when you have a buffer overflow, you've got to be pretty flipping crafty to do remote code execution with it. Denial of service just crash the thing. But yeah. Interesting. So no active exploits in the wild. Note to those of you out there who may or may not be using SonicWall, patch it. Mm -hmm. Patches are available. We have another note coming up and it's uh, something else that I don't think affects me, but you don't really see these so often. So I wanted to plug it in there. There's a BIOS uh, is, bug. Is that this one? Ah! Oh, is that it? Doesn't like binary.io doesn't like me. All right. I didn't realize that before I started. It's okay. I can share it. Well, let me, uh, sometimes a, sometimes an incognito window is the solution to bypassing our own work. No, well, I'll just say proceed. Um, yeah, there we go. Do that. Boom. Yes, there is a BIOS bug. This is the big breakdown on how it works, but in general, it affects like Alienware, uh, some specific Intel ones. There's a bunch of CVEs. A Dell BIOS contains improper input validation vulnerability, local authenticated malicious user, may potentially exploit this vulnerability, all high ones, mm -hmm. 8.2 and above. Uh, they, you know, Dell boxes, Alienware, it's very specific to only a couple computers. So if you're using something like that, I believe there is a patch out and it's worth the BIOS update. So okay. in less than a year, this, uh, there go. this site has disclosed, uh, disclosed 42 high severity vulnerabilities. It's pretty impressive. Wow. Yeah. So very cool. <laughs> but okay. We got two big they... ones coming up, I think, right? <laughs> I don't know. I was just going to joke and say, unless the near binary disclosed 42 high severity of vulnerabilities, but they can't get their cert right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. That's, mm. That's, a, that's a bad look. C clean your room. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Hold on. All right, this is an article from Jonathan Nudson, fellow colleague at Synopsys, who is obviously reporting on the behalf of their research team, uh, analyzing two spring vulnerabilities, uh, CVE 2022-22963, which is the first one that has remote code execution based on the Spring Cloud function. You can find out more. Uh, Tanzu were the guys, I think, the guys, the researchers, yeah, the VMware guys who found it. But what's weirder and more prevalent is the Spring for Shell that doesn't have a CVE or didn't have a CVE last night when this came out. I looked today, and this is a different article, and it still doesn't have one. It's just got a name. However, there are reports of active exploits of it now in the past 24 hours. Um, there is a posted exploit for the older one here, Chinese developer. So if you want, you can go to this port swigger link and go learn more about that. Um, but yes, the new zero day vulnerabilities, there is examples. I can't remember where it says there, that there's, ex oh, there it is being, being exploded, reportedly both bugs being now reported exploded in the wild. So another Java bug. I guess that was getting a bad rap. It's pretty funny. I got I got another one for you too. This is half breaking news, but this just got shared out. It there's a vulnerability uh, need, carve out now, but do you, do you want me to go away and you want to yeah, share it? Yeah, you gotta get out of there so I can share it with you. Da, da, da. Oh, I gotta click this. <laughs> yeah, big announcement for uh, not a lot of surprise uh this just came out and actually the website was broken up until like three minutes ago i was hitting refresh being like is this thing gonna come back up what's going on i thought this okay. was conveniently down but yes we have a critical severity spring framework remote code execution JDK oh. nine plus is this spring for shell but now with a number or is it a different one I think it has to do, I think it's the same thing, but it might be very specific to uh, like a build pack or something like that. 
Okay, yeah, spring web flux. I mean, I'm assuming it is. Yeah, it seems very specific. Okay, but I'm just cool. kind of shocked that, I like, because VMware is disclosing it. So now maybe it's spring for shell, but then VMware is saying, hey, this is how we're impacted. No, no, VMware did the last one. So I, I get oh, the impression that VMware the is thing. doing, yeah, same people. Same people. I just think, you know how it would be, right? If, if VMware's researchers are basically sticking their finger into the salty hole of, of uh, spring at the moment, uh, they're just going to go blah, 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 and they're just going to come out with a whole bunch, right? Yeah. It says the initial vulnerability report was published today. Okay. Well, I mean, the one I just showed you. What was the? Is today's date? It was two uh, o'clock today. Like it's a half an hour before the show started. True. True. All right. Beat me to it. No, I don't know if they're the same. That's the thing. That one. That one. This one calls it Spring for Shell. Yours. Yeah. This one not just says Spring Framework all. RCE early announcement. This is on the could Spring be, blog. It, it could be a third. So for those who watch want this, to, yeah, to watch check it out. I'm going to paste it in the, in the chat, right. but there yeah, we go. very interesting. I'm sure we'll come back with a lot more information next week. So stay tuned. Yeah, I think it's going to, well, who knows if, if the, if the Tansy researchers are, and I'll do mine there, are going to town on, on spring, then yeah, we may have more to report. I hope so. That'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. Let's try tool time. Let's do something. All right. Does everybody know uh, what time go. it is? So this is partially my fault because StackRock's supposed to be, it was open sourcing and there was a bunch of last minute work that was getting done. And it was, let's just say I didn't have enough time. So I'm leaning on my partner to, uh, to help me out, to bail me out. And he's got a bunch of cool stuff he wants to show you. All right. I stuck on the event card at the last minute supply chain visuals because I'll, and I'll explain. I, I, I work, I have a job. I work at Bridge Crew. Bridge Crew is is a complicated multi subsection of Prisma Cloud, which is also part of Palo Alto. It's kind of like Stackworks Red Hat IBM almost in a complicated way. But it's um I work in the open source, uh with the open source people. So I work on Chekhov and Yor and all that open source goodness. I don't actually spend much time in this world, which is the bridge crew open source as a service, essentially. It does all the infrastructure as code scanning. Um, I'm not going to go through this because maybe someday we'll do a demo of this. That seems too commercial for this show. But the reality, the thing that I thought was cool and surprised me, if you're looking in for something that reconciles infrastructure as code with runtime and does that in a super GitOpsy way, um, like what Flux and things like that do, but this does it for like full cloud, like the four the, the four big clouds. I'm saying that because we just added Oracle as if it was a big cloud, uh, could, just because somebody asked us to. But it's it's the usual suspects, right? And yeah. this there's a there's a debatably effective dashboard because that's mandatory. And then we have an just an, just going through an instant screen that tells you recently scanned runtimes. Like this is my Kubernetes runtime that I've, I'm goofing around here, showing me non-compliance and errors, and you know, set comp profiles. I've got all sorts of bad stuff in my home cluster, but I, I'm okay with it. And then the project view for people who are more concerned with what's in their Git, it's the other side of it. There's a demo goat, which has got all sorts of bad Terraform in it. So it, uh, it loads up and tells you what's wrong from a Git perspective. Uh, and there's various connections and uh, connective tissue between the two that says, hey, this doesn't match your runtime, et cetera, et cetera. Detection of drift, right? Lovely. Actually, there's one right there. Not intending to demo it, but there's one right there showing it's a bit small, but drift detected between this repo and its implementation live. So cool, nice. But what showed up, it kind of made me go, what the? Um, because I'm not part of this project. And oh. I went, I went, I went, oh, 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 I shouldn't be so excited about this, but I am. It's a good looking graph. Uh, and this is a good looking graph. And this was the demo goat I was just looking at. And I was like, oh yeah, there we go. I, me, owns the demo goat repo. And then it, goes through all the different files and these declare these resources, which are Terraform resources. And of course you can click on it and I left my information, blah, blah, out. You click, you switch through there, you get the various details on here. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, so it's really new. And so I, I did I did manage to speak to, by the way, if you've got tons of stuff, so there, there's like extensions that give you more details. If it's, it's absolutely like tons of stuff inside here, you can expand it. I think there's like some visualization scaling issues that we've got to deal with here because this came out like last week kind of thing. So it's interesting to see how this extends out. Uh, my Discussions were that we're going to do all sorts of clever things like drawing lines between vulnerabilities. If you've got Kubernetes and it finds Docker files in your repo, it gives you the vulnerabilities. We're doing, um, we're working on something called the image reconciler that that connects the images to even Terraform that makes claims that uses images, mm -hmm. and as well GitHub action files that use images that okay that was i was literally just about to say that because a lot of people think oh i need to secure my my container images or something like that it's like well you just you build with some random github image so you should probably check those too right yeah um, how, how, by the way well, that, how would you differentiate between the two is there a term i've heard uh like like running images like there's you know container yeah, images know. but then what's the what's the word to say it's uh like a cron job like or it's something that's uh, part of the pipeline because you really should def differentiate. Yeah, right? it's a good discussion. I don't know yeah, what you would call that, somebody, but it's like uh, you're right. It's like a CI right. image. Leave yeah. a comment if you know what it is. I need a, I need a new term. I need something uh, a new tech term to learn. I agree with that. Yeah, because that's going to come here, and we that'll probably be a discussion we have inside here. Because at the moment, at the moment we're doing a bunch of different things. We're focusing on CI things. I'm working on GitLab CI and GitHub Actions CI. So scanning for, there's all sorts of ways you can mess with GitHub Actions. So I'm doing rules around that. But because you, the, you, you decide what image you're using, this piece that my boss Barack is working on, which is the image reconciler, I'm gonna be able to call into that and say, all right, give me the vulnerabilities in this as well. And all that should just show up here. So this is just the beginning of some very cool, kind of for me, would become the new dashboard. Why would I need a dashboard? This rocks. I would come here and then I would use this to traverse all the other files. So anyway, uh, the other cool thing, which I didn't understand what this top button was, you can see, uh, Foster, we, I mentioned there was this panel and I didn't quite have a ga a, a, an idea behind it. Um, some of the things that Bridge Crew does is it, it will auto create pull requests if it finds problems, right? It scans your thing. It says, hey, this is a misconfiguration. Here's our suggestion. It's a pull request. This allows you to create a bulk single pull request with a whole bunch of changes. So like all this commits. So you can go, oh, this is really bad. Fix all of them now with one pull request as opposed to a zillion pull requests. That's awesome. So you, through the graph, you can do this sort of reconciled pull request thing. Um, you can see, I don't want to do this one under the, but they're all in order here, right? So this would, I think this would still be in one massive pull request. So there is this sort of individual aspect of looking at vulnerabilities in here, but I'm kind of like, this wasn't here before, definitely not. So I think it's neat that there's this idea of being able to pull request at scale. It's that's always the question, right? Does it scale? Yeah. And Brisco looks cool on a small repo. Um, but I mean, since we're Prisma Cloud now, they're probably installing this thing on Terraform in, uh, repos that just have a billion Terraform files. And so they would just like a yes, please button, which is what you're getting off the back of this. Yeah, that's also so, somewhat dangerous, but yeah. <laughs> oh, totally. Maybe nobody will use it, but it's there, right? I'm sure yeah. there's gotta be some kind of workflow around it. There will be a workflow around it. People will just reject it. It's also, yeah, it's just a PR, right? It's like, it's oh, yeah, you wanna make a thousand changes? No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, please go do them one by one. Yeah, it, uh, what, it would be interesting if you could rate limit the amount of changes. So I could say, mm. like, hey, you know, you, you might have access to all these repos, but you should only really be making like three or four changes at one time. Because at a human level, if yeah. I get a PR and like you've changed a thousand files, it's like, all right, well, it's I need a whole week. I need a whole afternoon to check this, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're 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 a bad 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 developer. Bad. Don't do that. Or a bad security person. Yeah, it's one of those. Uh, it's a cool feature, but can be abused so quickly, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I can yeah. see that. So, so that that's the deal there. Um, and I probably prematurely did that because it just came out. 
we're doing That's an awesome. office hours. You mentioned you mentioned your office hours um, that you're doing for Stack Rocks. We've got one on the sixth, which is Wednesday at five p.m. So go check out the Bridge Crew site. I don't know where it lives. It'll be on. It'll be on on our. Oh, it'll be on our Bridge Crew uh, YouTube. And the guy who is the primary engineer on this is the guest. Oh. So he's going to do a much better, like, 20-minute demo on it and explain all the little idiosyncrasies. And I said that too many times um, <laughs> of, of how it works. So I'm looking forward to that. That's probably my first access to really pin down the main developer and really, you know, get the future, past, present, and future of it. So I'm pretty exciting. Very cool. Would you say so there we go. Wednesday the 5th, 5 p.m.? Wednesday the 6th. Six. This is Wednesday six the 6th. Six at five PM. GMT. Uh, just go to the noon Eastern. Yeah, Sweet. noon Eastern, nine AM, and that'll be. Yeah, the easiest thing for us is to just go to the YouTube on Bridge Crew. That's where it'll live. Yeah, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely gonna check that out. That's a very cool project. Looks very neat. And I'll find awesome. out uh, what I'm, <laughs> what work I'm doing actually feeds into this. That's always sometimes a surprise. Very cool. Yeah, and actually. Uh, just to, to round it out at the end, as I'm getting pinged, all the license files are good. So the blog's up. Stack Rocks is, Woo! it's there. It's all for you to use. So it is now available. Go download, fork it, screw around you heard with it. it. Here. You heard it here first. <laughs> as usual, yeah, breaking, breaking the news is. as it happens. Awesome. All Save. right. We'll see you next week. I'm assuming where we're gonna yeah. let's uh, let's see if we can make Stack Rocks work. Absolutely, yeah. I'll be back in time. I'll be here. So yeah, I, I will. I, that's my job <laughs> to try the new Stack Rocks. Um, but we'll see you then. Hey, we got a little thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Uh, until next week, I'm Mike Foster. I'm Steve Jaguar. And have a great rest of your week. Yeah.